Okay. So everybody, uh, welcome to here. So we're going to start just a few minutes more. Okay. Thank you. Professor Chen. Okay. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been great to meet you online and offline of uh, uh, Open Forum today. I'm Li Yuxiao, Secretary General of Cybersecurity Association. Hello, I'm the Chairman of Open Forum. Open Forum is enhancing international cooperation on data-driven digital economy. 那本次论坛呢，是由中国国家互联网信息办公室国际合作局主办，中国网络空间安全协会协办。今天的会议，Administration of China and co-hosted by Cyber Security Association of China. The forum today will be co-chaired by me and Mrs. Miss Yi Chen Chen, Associate Professor, Beijing Normal University. Professor Chen. Please say a few words to the Okay, thank you, General Secretary Li. Uh, I think we have uh, some uh, technical problem. Okay, can we just hold on for a few minutes? Because we have a simultaneous interpretation at the moment. But uh, I think a technical has uh, some problem. So just give us uh, two minutes more. Okay, can you hear me, uh, General Secretary Li? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, just for two minutes, because I think there's a technical problem. Okay? Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. So let's go on. All right. So today, the world is experiencing unprecedented changes in country. All kinds of uncertainty and emergency events have been seriously hindered the recovery of global economy. The digital economy has been increasingly integrated into the all process of economic and social development in all fields. It's becoming a key force in restructuring global factory resources, reshaping the global economic structure and changing the global competition pattern. Where digital economy is developing by leaps and bounds, it's facing challenges such as the digital divide and the isolated data alerts. At the same time, cyberspace is facing increasingly more network security problems, leading digital infrastructure, weak digital governance capability, insufficient digital latency, and the low international competitiveness of digital economy. Against this backdrop, the forum will provide a valuable opportunity to gather our experts here to discuss the topic such as um, digital economy and the digital connectivity for all, digital and the data governance in digital economy, and the experience sharing of China's efforts to promote international cooperation on digital economy. With the efforts to jointly promote international cooperation, in digital economy and build a closer community with a shared future in cyberspace. So first of all, I suggest uh, our uh, guest speaker uh, to turn on your camera and say hi, okay, to everybody, please. I hope you can turn on your camera and um, maybe also I hope that you can wave your hand to all. Okay, thank you, Yanqing. Thank you. All right. This moment, we just we just fixed the problem. So now it's, everything should be okay. Okay, so okay. Yeah. 
Can I just yeah welcome everybody to come to the, uh, our uh, workshop open forum on the uh, co international corporations and uh, uh, enhancing international cooperation and data driven digital economy achieving the digital collectivity and the common prosperity. So I uh, just want to say something because we have a, a, a simultaneous interpretation. So therefore, when some speaker was speaking in Chinese, but they were interpreted in English. Okay, so no problem. And then uh, we will pass the time to uh, uh, Secretary Lee again. So please, Geosecretary Lee, uh, can you invite our first speaker? Okay. <clears throat> all right. Thank you, uh, Professor Chen. So, um, uh, thank you all. And uh, now let's start our open forum. And uh, I must uh, pattern that due to the limited time, every speaker, please make sure your speech uh, is delivered within six minutes. So all our guest speaker will have enough time to share the opinion. Thank you. And the first uh, today, we are honored to have our uh, uh, Mr. Xu Feng here with us. He is the Deputy Director General of International Cooperation Bureau, Cyberspace Administration of China. Uh, let's applaud to welcome Mr. Xu to address. Feng, please. Well, we, we cannot hear him. Is he is he speaking? Or is he... Uh, no, yes, I don't hear also. Uh, I welcome help him. Okay, I, I think he has to unmute himself. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. Please. Very, very, very great. Very clear. Please uh, also open your screen if we can let us see you. Okay. Actually, I cannot open my camera because of the restriction. I think maybe I don't know the problem. I think oh, okay. Uh, so just uh, uh, you can give us uh, your you can your open, presentation. You can open your screen. Uh, audio. Uh, video. You should have the audio. Can you open your video? Yeah, yeah, please go give him the co-host, please. Okay, now it should be okay. Uh, can you open it? Okay, okay, yeah, 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 to exchange views on the topic of enhancing international cooperation on data-driven digital economy, achieving digital connectivity and common prosperity. On behalf of the Bureau of International Cooperation, Cyberspace Administration of China, I would like to extend warm welcome to all the guests and friends participating both in person and online. As Chinese President Xi Jinping pointed out, digital technology, as the forerunner of the world's scientific and the technological revolution and the in industrial transformation in, th in this era has been increasingly integrated into all aspects of economic and social development. Profoundly changing people's way of life, production and social governance. From digital infrastructure building, digital transformation in society to application of new technologies such as 5G, and the Internet of Things. From initiation and signing RCEP to working towards joining DEPA and the CPTPP, China is always committed to promoting balanced, coordinated and inclusive global development, taking an active part in global governance of digital economy, advocating joint governance and shared benefits, and promoting mutual beneficial integration so as to share the development outcomes of the digital economy. Recently, China has released the white paper on jointly building a community with a shared future in cyberspace, which introduces China's vision of internet development and governance in the new era and its actions, shares its achievements in promoting the building of a community with a shared future in cyberspace. 
and outlines the prospects for the international cooperation. China has always been committed to promoting the building a peaceful, secure, open, cooperative, and orderly cyberspace by carrying out extensive international cooperation in the digital field and sharing development opportunities of the times with the rest of the world. This open forum aims to build a bridge of communication and exchanges to explore digital connectivity for all and the development of digital economy, calling on stakeholders to work with the international community for more unity and cooperation. Another goal of this forum is to share China's experience in developing digital economy so as to promote a steady development of digital cooperation and foster an enabling international environment for the development of digital economy. Taking this opportunity, I would like to share with you some of my perspectives. First, we need to uphold connectivity and enhance digital connectivity for all. With the deepening of digital economy development and globalization, the economic and the social well-being of countries in the world is closing, closely, closely intertwined. In recent years, countries around the world has made remarkable achievements in accelerating digital infrastructure building, improving internet penetration, and promoting interconnection, which has created new opportunities for their economic growth and digital transformation, and blazed new trails for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. Under the Great. guidance of President Xi Jinping's vision of building a community with a Xi's future in cyberspace, we are willing to deepen exchanges and cooperation in the digital field with other countries, continue to expand economic and trade exchanges, promote the inter interconnection and the digital infrastructure, enhance digital connection for all, and jointly promote the healthy and the sustainable development of global digital economy. Second, we need to uphold joint contribution and promote the building of international roles for digital governance. At present, global digital economy is facing problems such as unbalanced development, inadequate rules, and inequitable order. It has become an international consensus to strengthen cooperation in internet governance among countries. China firmly safeguards the international system with the United Nations as its core and the international law order underpinned by international law. China has in initiated the Global Development Initiative and other international cooperation agreements deeply engaged in the formulation of international roles for digital economy. Besides, we step up efforts to enhance exchanges and cooperation with the international community to, to accelerate the process of improving global governance system for digital economy, to build a healthy and sustainable ecology for digital economy, and to facilitate the building of international roles for digital governance. Third, we need to uphold mutual benefits and share the fruits of digital economy. At present, the world still face, faces lots of difficulties and uncertainties in economic recovery. Against this backdrop, we have always adhered to putting people first, strengthened digital infrastructure building, make good use of data, and improved the legal system for cybersecurity. Promoting the all round development of digital economy and speeding up the globalization of digital economy. At the same time, China has actively assumed international responsibility by enhancing digital exchanges and cooperation with other countries and promoting the common prosperity for digital economy so as to enable the benefits of the information technology shared by all humanity. Dear guests and friends, Digital economy has become an important driving force to support global economic development currently and in the future. China is willing to work with other countries to deepen international cooperation in digital economy for interconnection and the common prosperity on the basis of common development, mutual benefits, and universal security. Hopefully, this open forum will build a platform for us to exchange and share wisdom and insights in this field. 
promote international digital cooperation and jointly usher in a new stage for global digital economy. Last but not least, I wish this forum a big success. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiring address, Mr. Xu. Thanks. Now we will give the floor to Professor Yiking Chen Chen, who is in the physical venue in Serbia. She will proceed over the session of keynote speech. So let's welcome Professor Yiking Chen. Okay, thank you, Chair uh, Secretary. Li Yuxiao. So in, for the second part, I will chair the second part of the uh, guest speakers. We have uh, five guest speakers we, uh, who will deliver the, the different uh, uh, presentation and speech. Okay, so the first one, we will welcome Natif Latid, who is the uh, president of the IPv6 forum uh, to give his presentation. Okay, and uh, let's welcome, uh, yeah, President uh, Latit, please uh, play his, uh, because uh, he is, um, uh, he recorded uh, his uh, radio presentation, so we have to play, you know, the radio presentation on behalf of, of presidents. Okay, please. Uh, good morning to you from Luxembourg. I'm uh, Latif Latid, uh, IPv6 uh, Forum founder and uh, president, as well as uh, HC, IPE, ISG chair. I'd like to share with you a couple of thoughts primarily on IPv6, uh, the international cooperation and the uh, projects that exist between uh, China and the uh, EU. So first of all, IPv6 is now uh, practically booming. Uh, we have now crossed 50% uh, worldwide IPv6 penetration. So some two and a half billion people are using IPv6 and most probably not even knowing it. So the biggest uh, deployer of IPv6 is obviously China with more than 700 million IPv6 users using primarily 4G and also 5G. And 5G uh, is deployed largely in uh, China. Uh, more than 80% of it is, is deployed in China, as well as India with more than 30, uh, 350 a million IPv6 users. So it shows that Asia is a leaping frog in becoming uh, the first continent, if not, you know, two thirds of the IPv6 world will be uh, running into the country. This is fundamental for the deployments of many new technologies, such as IoT, 5G, cloud computing, as well as data uh, transparency since the end-to-end -end model has been restored and many new applications that are very important in the future such as blockchain for all kind of the supply chains uh, such as food and logistics and medical and so on so these areas are going to be handled primarily through the end-to-end -end model of ipv6 which is very important now in terms of uh, data sovereignty I think the model of the European Commission, which is the Gaia-X, is a very important step forward. And I would highly recommend that all the other nations uh, use this uh, platform, also take into account GDPR uh, rules, which give certain uh, privacy to uh, the uh, data of uh, every single user. And this is really a fundamental way forward to move there. So the international cooperation uh, between all nations is fundamental as the internet is an open platform. So with IPv6, we'll be able to communicate end to end with each other. So the peering has happened so far at the ISP level. Now the peering should happen at the end user level. So end user peer to peer to peer is really the next step for innovations in many, many applications uh, in the future. And the data the sovereignty is really fundamental as each country now uh, should really archive its data in its country and not leave it up to international companies to expose your data due to other policies of the other countries. So I'll not sign, uh, sign any of them, uh, but they should also comply to these rules. And the international uh, cooperation, uh, between, especially between China and the EU, is really fundamental. And one of the very good projects is uh, the Macau 
uh, and uh, the Fraunhofer Institute uh, sharing data between each other, uh, run by the Beijing Internet Institute, led by uh, our uh, VP for the IPv6 Forum worldwide, that's Mr. Liu Dong, and I really appreciate the work he's doing in order to get a certain uh, a serious uh, cooperation between the European Union and, and China. And I think that's the way forward for all of us. I know we have a hard time these days you know, to talk to each other, but that, these things are only temporary. So the future is to those that are promoting uh, peace uh, and prosperity, as well as uh, business uh, uh, opportunities for all countries at the same level. So, so I would expect this, this kind of cooperation between these two countries are going to be a symbol of uh, a cooperation for the other countries to follow so that everyone is on the same wagon. So I, uh, I uh, appreciate the, your invitation to be part of this, uh, this session and I wish you an excellent discussion among you and I hope to read the minutes of your uh, uh, session uh, very soon. Have a great uh, conference. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for uh, President Nati's uh, uh, presentation and uh, for his uh, best wish to our workshops. So uh, next, we would like to uh, uh, invite, uh, we because I think we have some uh, issues about, uh, yeah, we would like to invite uh, Miss, we would like to invite Mr. Yaha Sanayi. He is the member of board and the executive manager of the Palestinian Chinese Friendship Association to deliver his presentation. Um, so his presentation, his topic is on the achieving common development in cyberspace, deepening international collaboration in the digital economy and achieving communication and common prosperity. Okay. Uh, Please welcome uh, Yah Yaha Saleh, the executive manager of the Palestine Chinese Friendship Association. Thank you. Mr. Li Yue Xiao, Secretary General of the Cybersecurity Association of China. Honorable attendees, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me tell, tell you about a situation that happened to, ma to me during the corona pandemic, COVID-19, 2020. At that time, we were in my city, in Ramallah, Palestine, in quarantine, and we were forbidden to leave our home. I had nothing but the internet and virtual world, and I started searching the internet, browsing, social media and soon I joined the groups on WeChat of foreigners with ties to China and we begin exchange personal experiences and information and everyone provided data about some products especially during that period medical and health products were highly demanded in the global market and we succeeded closing some commercial deals. This cyberspace has been used to exchange products, provide them and closing successfully deals. I'm still involved in multiple groups that are concerned to global trade and exchange opportunities. Therefore, in order to develop and benefit global, globally from cyberspace, international cooperation must take place in cyberspace and benefits from the initiative on China-Africa jointly building community with a shared future in cyberspace to become a global initiative. Because of its comprehensiveness, clarity, transparency, and world mutual benefits. Thus, I would like to emphasize some of the following points. 
One, development and improving the level of access of the internet. Two, developing public service on information and communication technology. Integration of the digital image with industrial development. Ensure joint security and enhanced mutual strategies con confident in cyberspace and protecting its critical information infrastructure. Five, improving the management of personal information security and intensifying international cooperation in the field of combating cyber crime and cyber terrorism. Six, under the framework of the United Nations in global governance, shared in the basic information management of the internet on the equal footing concerning the mutual benefits of the cyberspace, especially e-commerce. It provides more opportunities for small businesses in the digital economy and world cooperation. Eight, guiding the world into a common market that displays its products, services, in cyberspace. So, cyber would make networking and a fair communication for everyone to spread the benefits towards the world. Nine, privacy in dealing with digital content for each digital region. Each country has its own peculiarities and traditions that differ from country to country, region to region. 10. Preserving personal freedom in digital content that does not exceed the freedom of others. 11. Mutual respect in cyberspace. This ideologies of each society are respected and faith. Customs and traditional are respected. 12. Develop cyber security to become a cyber resili resilience. Protect it, uh, itself from deduct, respond to and recover from cyber attacks. The international community must cooperate in this cyberspace so that prosperity prevails of everyone without exception. We must cooperate it by everyone to overcome the dangers and difficulties facing the world and achieve justice and prosperity for all. Finally, I support and encourage Chinese President Mr. Xi of building a community with a shared future of humanity in cyberspace as well. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for your insightful speech, Mr. Yahya Saikhar. Um, so now let's welcome um, uh, Professor uh, Iking Chin. Um, she's an associate professor from Beijing Normal University to give us a speech. Professor Chin, please. Yes, thank you. Actually, I'm on site. <laughs> okay. E excuse me, can you play my PPT? Yes, thank you. Okay. Is that ready? Can you pay my PPT, the PowerPoint, please? Okay. So I will talk about uh, from a gender perspective. As we said, you know, the open forum is also about uh, uh, gender issues. So uh, my talk is about uh, uh, building gender inclusive digital ecosystems, and uh, not uh, 
about uh, in China, but uh, it's uh, just generally, you know, because gender issue is important in terms of digital ecosystem. So and uh, so, as I said, you know, gender is a uh, gender uh, inclusive of the gender is a global challenge for all the countries, not only in China or in developing world as well. So. If we look at the OECD's report, this is a recent report by, published by OECD. They said women are underrepresented in ICT jobs, top management, and academic career. So men are four times more likely than women to be the ICT specialist. Okay, this is a, uh, a, a report from the OECD. So if you look at the, this is a, a statistic from the UK, United Kingdom. So we can see, you know, and uh, even in terms of pay, the gender pay right, uh, we, 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 we can see that uh, more women work part-time than men, but the men experience the most growth in part-time wages in 2019. So basically, in terms of labor, for, uh, labor market, you know, women uh, have more uh, doing, uh, they, they, they prefer part-time job than full-time because of different reasons, like a family, uh, to have to look after their family, okay? So majority of mother also works in the UK. So, but women usually they pay less, even as a part-time job uh, workers, they pay less than men. So, and uh, if we look at uh, uh, different features, we, f we found that women comes to more than 40% of the workforce, but uh, hold only less than 2% of the top management positions. So actually, if they want to do a promotion you know, between men and women, usually the woman has to uh, receive a higher performance rating than promoting men to get uh, uh, senior positions. And, and also minority women, particularly at risk, you know, um, women from the ethnic minority groups. So therefore, you know, they have a very small percentage of professional and uh, manager private sector positions. So the other things, uh, main, main barriers for them to advancement is not having uh, influential mentor. Mentor is also, you know, that this is the kind of, you have somebody to guide you to uh, climb the career ladders. And also the lack of the information, informal networking with the influential colleagues. Networking is also important in terms of senior management. Uh, jobs and lack of the company role models for member of the uh, same uh, racial and ethnic groups, lack of the high visibility assignments. So these are reasons which contribute to the gender bias, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, unequal payments between men and women. So that's uh, one, one of the other issues, glass ceilings. There's a subtle and a non-subtle barriers to women's career progress. So uh, I think we have many women presented here. Maybe you can have some own experience about the glass ceiling as well. So and uh, if you look at the barriers, what kind of barriers uh, for women to progress in the IT industry and the digital economy industry? So those are the barriers, okay? So for example, perception about a woman's potential. So what is our role? You know, we have a, a different society, different culture, and have a different perception about the women's role and their potential in the society. And also there's a stereotypes. Uh, so for example, you have a male boss, or I mean, the board of director, if the majority of them are male, whether they are willing to recruit a, a female, you know, um, members, because they have their perception about the, uh, what are capable senior management. So this is also an issue about the stereotypes. And uh, as I said, there's another reason, like absent of a role model and the career information and the guidance and the career breaks. For example, if you have a children, you will get a maternity leave, which usually takes one year or two years. Will they, uh, will, will you manage to come back after two years or one year gap? Uh, I think it's very challenging for many women to achieve that. Okay, and the caring responsibility. So we have to care about our family, elderly people, elderly and the children. So this is also our responsibility. And uh, the other thing is uh, full-time working being the norms. Uh, but uh, this is very difficult if we work as a part-time. So therefore, we should provide more flexibility for part-time workers, you know, allow us to have a flexible working hours. 
and a lack of talent plannings. For example, uh, if we want to help women, whether we should uh, build up some fast tracking outstanding female candidate, allow them have a fast track, fast tracking career promotions, and a lack of the mentoring, mentoring and a networking opportunity for female executives. Okay, this is a one. I think many many survey already point out this is one of the most important factor to. Uh, actually undermined you know, women's uh, career opportunity, lack of the mentoring and the networking opportunity. I don't know why, but it seems we lack of this kind of the capacity, you know, the opportunities. So, um, so uh, I want to give you one example in Africa, not in China, okay? Uh, because uh, if you want to have a Chinese case, you can come to me, I will tell you the Chinese case. But since we hold this IGF in Africa, so I want to tell you, give you some example about the Africa country, how do they help to, uh, you know, uh, Bring, uh, bridge the gaps between women and men. So this is some uh, two example. One is uh, uh, supporting the digital uh, gender gaps in Africa. African Technology Business Network, ATBN, together of African Euro organizer, Weblink. And they, and, uh, in that uh, discussion, actually they point out the barriers for women. Actually, we, we found it's quite similar from the found findings we found from in UK, and in Europe countries as well. For example, as I said, the cultural norms, the society structures, lack of the role model and the woman-centered support within the digital economy uh, ecosystem, which is quite similar for, from what we found in UK, okay? And, uh, so, and so therefore, what, 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 what they have been done, they developed a her future of Africa, a woman-centered program to help women. And also, they published this founding woman, a book, Sport Night, African women in technology sector as a role model. So if you need a role model, okay, they publish your book about uh, how this African woman, you know, to advance their career in the technology sector. So this is uh, the role model. Okay, the second uh, is a uh, the second uh, approach they adapt is women-centered design can help to enable digital innovation. So, uh, for example, when they, uh, they, they, they do a lot of the lease service to their members, so what kind of lease you, you need for us to support you? Uh, so, that, that's, that, that they identify five essential needs among the female digital uh, ecosystem participants. For example, mentorship, leadership, entrepreneurship, community development, and networking opportunity. So, mentoring, leadership always come out as the priorities, it's very interesting. And uh, also they uh, create an initiative which train and uh, uh, equip uh, women to, with the technological skills and the female entrepreneurship to, uh, tools to development the women's leadership and give them support in terms of the financial fundings, okay? So it's a very interesting project. And this, uh, the last one is about uh, uh, how, do I, uh, how do they mobilize the, the international network to help the African women to get more knowledge and skill. Because they mobilize the people and the um, administrative organization with diverse resources, for example, expertise and the capacity to coordinate the efforts to drive the systematic change. For example, they have this code Coalition for Digital Equality. Uh, these coalitions, they have the connect African digital economies uh, actors and the policymakers in UK, you know, academia and the industry partners to help them to collaborate in addressing the digital gender divide in Africa. So international collaborations, you know, assistance from the other uh, society, from the other countries, is also very helpful in terms of the address the digital uh, gender gaps. So in the end, what are the challenge? The challenge is that uh, what, uh, what are the, we, we have to think why we need this kind of closing the gender gap. What are the benefit? Okay, why we, do we need to do it? So everybody and every company have to think this uh, uh, question hardly. And uh, so we will not see the impact overnight, but this is uh, around recognition, not only your pool of the tenant, but the culture and the social norms that it dictate and challenge the way you walk talking the equality where we see it and making sure we are walking that talks. So this will not happen overnight and it is also influenced by the cultural norms and social norms. So we will have a long way to go. Okay, that's all my, what I want to say. Thank you very much. So I give the time back to General Secretary Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. Uh, you gave us a very important issue for the 
the gender is uh, for the digital ecosystem, how to build it. I also think that it's very important for us to think about, uh, about the digital equality. Thank you. And um, uh, now let's welcome Professor Wang Yiwei, uh, German Knight Chair Professor in the European Union. European Union, Director of the Institute of International Affairs at the Zhenyi University of China to give us a speech. Uh, Professor Wang, please. Thank you, uh, General, Secretary General Li, and uh, thank you for the organizer kind of invitation. Uh, my presentation is on more digital circuit in the post COVID 19 era. Uh, even though the COVID is still uh, going on, but we should think about the future. Um, globalization, uh, people mentioned about uh, the new liberalizing globalization is uh, uh, end. So what's the future? Uh, some people say this is the globalization, glo uh, regionalization, even some uh, global fractalization of so-called uh, decarbo, the new Cold War. But at the same time, I think the, the globalization is uh, transforming to digital and uh, green globalization. Uh, and then the problem is, uh, more than 80% of the people uh, live in the developing countries. Uh, they are, those con uh, people suffered uh, most earlier uh, from the globalization benefit late and less uh, from the prosperity of globalization. Look at this map. Uh, people are actually not vaccinated enough. Uh, there are even uh, 10, uh, 1 billion, uh, 1 billion uh, people without enough electricity. And 270 million people cannot access to internet. So when we talk about the online talking, online med education, online conference, uh, global connectivity uh, revolution, uh, those people uh, suffered a lot uh, without enough uh, electricity, could not access to the internet. Now people more work at home, remote working, remote, uh, remote, uh, you know, uh, the conference, uh, all this. So this is the map of the uh, the world at the night. Uh, the brightness gathered in uh, uh, Central America, Japan, uh, uh, Western European coastal areas. For other, uh, you know, landlocked countries and areas, uh, most within the developing countries, actually live in the darkness. So that's the reality. Internet is more uh, makes this world is more uh, e uh, equal. Uh, so those intensive the internet users still uh, advanced economies, and uh, this is a uh, uh, submarine uh, cape. Uh, it's uh, connected between U.S. and uh, Europe, uh, transatlantic. Uh, but Africa, Latin America, actually not so many uh, connections. And the Huawei, actually, 2016 uh, Huawei Ocean is the first uh, uh, cape connect uh, Cameroon and uh, Brazil. So mutual connectivity between different uh, continents, and then more efficient to give the poverty, uh, to bridge the gaps, and uh, to achieve the goal of the sustainable development in 2030. China, at least, the country uh, achieved the, all the goals uh, uh, 10 years earlier, particularly lift the poverty. So the, when the Chinese uh, modernization, uh, actually now is more uh, very attractive to other developing countries. Since the, uh, before opening reform, China's per capita GDP is only one third of the South Sahara African countries uh, average, even less. So the, uh, the China experience is, uh, we say industrial digitalization, digital industrialization. So combined together, and uh, the pre uh, President Xi Jinping uh, identified this in the 20 parties Congress of the Communist Party of China uh, last month as uh, the Chinese modernization. So what's the purpose of the Chinese modernization? Uh, not just to re, uh, reach with the greater regeneration of the Chinese nation, but to build the community of the shared future, that to benefit all the people. This is the traditional, actually, uh, Chinese culture, so from uh, Chinese modernization, and then the Belgium Initiative, Global Development Initiative, and the Global Security Initiative to build the community of the shared future for all humankind. So that's basically uh, the Chinese wishes and the Chinese motto. Uh, it's like it's, uh, Confucius identified. If you get rich, if you uh, progressively, you should help others. Uh, and then the China's open reform slogan said is, if you want to get rich, build the roads first. If you want to get rich, richer, uh, rich quickly, build the motor road. If you want to get rich immediately or richest, build the internet road. Uh, if you want to get rich together, 
like the African people said, uh, one, piece, one person walk, you can walk fast, but uh, only uh, all peoples work together, you can walk further, you can walk further, uh, and you reach the high destination, uh, long destination. So that's the uh, Belro Initiative, basically, uh, want to do, uh, to bridge the gaps in the digital world, bridge the information barrel and a digital divide. Uh, look at this map, uh, Eurasia continent, uh, the uh, developing countries, they also uh, have the gap between, uh, uh, you know, advanced uh, di uh, internet, but even less adva uh, development and underdevelopment in the internet. So how to bridge this gap uh, in, uh, you know, Eurasia continent, that's the originally the Belgium initiative was launched, but now uh, extend to Africa, Latin America to be the global. So China has a bridge to connect the advanced economy and the developing countries uh, with the Belgium initiative in the global value chain. And there are five pillars for the, uh, the uh, BRI, uh, the Belgium initiative, policy coordination. We have the dream, uh, digital, dream, uh, other uh, developing countries as well. Uh, and facilities, connections, and competitive uh, and, and trade, financial integration, and people to people bonds. Actually, uh, those uh, five pillars basically focus on the potential of the developing countries. Look at this map the population, GDP, agricultural, industrial, and, and the investment. Actually, it's very unbalanced, but a huge potential. Most of those countries, the BRI, that would live in the early stage of the Chinese opening reform. If China can achieve the goal, why not African and other BRI countries? So the, the, the shortage, the barrel <coughs> actually is the infrastructure, very poor, lack of enough electricity. So the basically BRI focus on infrastructure first, uh, power, uh, telecom, uh, and, uh, port, airport, all this, uh, and then uh, uh, can, can, can share the similar uh, experience of the China's opening and reform. So on the basis of that, uh, the Chinese government uh, launched uh, the Digital Circular Initiative in the Wuzhen uh, World Internet Conference 2007. So far, more than 17 countries actually joined, uh, including some African countries. So this actually is the uh, South, South Cooperation. Uh, when the China's modern, Chinese modernization to help the global South to reach the goal of the uh, SDG uh, in the digital world. Otherwise, the, those countries will be poor and poor. Uh, will be more marginalized when people talk about the internet, talk about the AI, uh, uh, talk about the blockchain technology, but those countries without enough electricity. For instance, now the Chinese uh, watch the uh, World Cup in Qatar because we have TV with like, electricity, but if you don't have electricity, if you don't have TV, how can uh, you watch the, the game uh, in Qatar? So this actually, uh, this digital circle road basically uh, what the focus. Uh, there are pi some priorities, uh, cooperation, uh, in Eastern Africa, like Kenya, uh, so you're based uh, Central uh, and Eastern European countries and ASEAN, like Malaysia. So that's the basically uh, of the Chinese dream uh, at the end of the closing ceremony of the Winter Olympic Games in Beijing. Uh, they are with the uh, motto of the One Family, actually also because of the China's uh, initiative and uh, other uh, developing countries uh, jointly efforts. So International Olympic Games uh, tend, uh, the act uh, uh, together as the, uh, the the fourth slogan, I think that we we need to work uh, uh, together uh, to towards to reach the goal of the SDG. And China, not the private companies, but also stay on enterprises like China Telecom uh, in the Philippines, in Africa, to help them to build the internet uh, system. And I think that that's uh, very important to bridge the gaps uh, to reach the goal. So for more, I have to ask for ten uh, proofs on the BRI and also committee of the shared future for your reference. And thank you for your attention. Thanks for Professor Wang's uh, uh, presentation and uh, give us some uh, uh, insight information about China's Silk World uh, uh, development project and their collaborations with the other countries as well. So the next we will invite uh, Zhao Bin, Mr. Zhao Bing, who is the general manager of information security management and operational center of China's mobile communication group. So he will uh, talk about uh, how do we uh, do the how to China to conduct the digital economy, international collaborations, and also interconnectivities in at the global stage. Okay, can we please play uh, Mr. Zhao Bing's video because he de he delivered his speech. 
uh, by video. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to attend the 17th UNIGF Forum. Mr. Fi Xiaotong once said, we need to appreciate the beauty of each civilization and achieve common harmony under the sky. I really love his words. So I have chosen a topic of my presentation, value, appreciate each other's beauty and achieve common prosperity. I really want to talk about deepening international cooperation and connectivity in the era of digital economy. I stress two main lines, five ongoing progress and one call. In August this year, Chairman Yang Jie, who is the chairperson of China Mobile, proposed that World 5G conference that energy and information are the two main lines that drove the development of human civilization. That progresses the civilization. This is the result of the integration of innovation of technologies and the use of energy and the generation and application of information. The underlying tone is the advancement of science and technology at the different stages of human civilization. The energy and information are showing different characteristics, especially in the era of information civilization. The accelerated integration of energy with information has expanded the rich diversity and infinite possibilities of human social development, triggering the fusion of what with bits. Digital technology is becoming an important driving force of digital economy. This is the first ongoing process. 5G AI big data cloud computing represented by new generation of information technologies have accelerated the fusion and integration of economy, society, and people's livelihood, and has become an indispensable development productivity. It is promoting the labor and the labor materials, labor object to undergo profound changes, many in three areas. First, the so-called emerging new infrastructure, providing information perception, transmission, storage, processing the whole chain of services. Second, the new factors of productivity, resulting in economic development, amplification, superposition, and multiplication. Third, the new production tools to promote the realization of quality change, efficiency gain, and the power change. The second ongoing process that is the development of the digital economy, which is moving along the fast lane. In 2021, global digital economy above scale uh, for 47 countries had added value of $38.1 trillion, accounting for 45% of total GDP. In terms of growth rate, the global digital economy will grow by 15.6% year on year in nominal terms. Structurally, the digital industry is reaching 85% mark. China's digital economy too has shown rapid development. The overall size of the digital economy has ranked second in the world for many years, reaching 45.5 trillion yuan last year, accounting for 39.8% of GDP, and the digital economy has become an important engine for economic growth. The third ongoing process is the scale of data, which is growing exponentially. According to analytics, the global data volume will reach 175 zettabyte in 2025, and this figure will reach 2,142 zettabyte in 2035. China's data growth is the most rapid higher than the global average annual growth of 3% and expect to reach 48.6 zettabyte in 2025, accounting for 27.8% of the global data volume expected to become the world's largest data circle. The fourth ongoing process is data security is facing huge challenges. On the one hand, data leaks are high and frequent, with 1,825 1, data leaks events reported worldwide last year, leaking up to 40 billion pieces of data. On the other hand, the means of attack continues to upgrade data pollution, supply chain poisoning, data erasure, ransom attacks, and other attacks have brought serious threats to data security. In this context, the fifth ongoing process is data governance has become the focus of the world's attention. 
the US, EU, UK, Japan, and other major economies around the world are developing, utilizing, and controlling data as a strategic resource by introducing national data strategies, improving domestic data legislation, and enhancing international data cooperation, and focusing on the cross-border flow of data. Of course, data governance is also a key concern of China. China, just like any other country in the world, attaches great importance to data governance. Since 2016, the country has improved its legal and regulatory system, refining its work rule, deepening its exploration and the practice in multiple fields and scenarios, promoted the systematization, standardization, and the legislation of data governance. One core. We call on the world to achieve a community of a shared future. Chinese President Xi Jinping, in his congratulatory letter to this year's World Internet Conference, emphasized that China is willing to work with all countries in the world to accelerate the building of a community of shared future in cyberspace and contribute Chinese wisdom and strength to the peaceful development of the world. The construction of a community of a shared future in the cyberspace is, a clo is not a close, independent work and requires joint efforts of all countries in the world through three common things. First, consensus. All countries need to respect each other, achieve a mutual understanding, seek common grounds while reserving differences, set common rules, appreciate the beauty and the diversity of each civilization in the digital economy era. The second is a shared governance. We should seek participation of multiple parties, enhance mutual trust, expanding proof the circle of friends, continue to strengthen interconnection and international cooperation. The third is win-win. We share the results of governance, shared experience of governance, work together to promote the common prosperity of the civilization's digital economy. Finally, coming back to Mr. Fei Xiaotong's 16 words, the beauty of each other should be appreciated. One beauty is appreciated, the world will become a whole. I hope to work with you to deepen international cooperation and connect interconnectivity to achieve common prosperity under the sky. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for Mr. Zhao's, uh, Zhang, Zhang Bing's uh, delivery. So that's, uh, next, we would like to welcome Professor Hong Yanqing. So Professor Hong is an expert uh, in terms of international law. He's a professor of the law at the Beijing Institute of Technology and a member of the Advisory Committee on International Law of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China. So Professor, uh, Hong, time is yours. You have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. Hong, 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 you have to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you for having me in this open forum. My topic of presentation today is about cross-world data flow. We all know that uh, um, more and more trade in goods and service rely on ICT technology, which in turn produce massive data and require cross-border cross -border data flow in order to com complete the trade. We also know that more and more countries start to regulate the location of data storage and the cross-border data flow to prevent security risk to data itself, to people, or to society and the countries. Therefore, we need to have an institution or mechanism to bridge the gap. Among all this, uh, among all this legal instru instrument and uh, mechanism to sustain cross-border data flow, certification stand out as a special uh, appealing to business. Uh, essentially, certification give cross-border data flow uh, a data processing activity a sign of trust when which holds for a period of time mostly two years or more here we have most uh the most mature certification mechanism e in eu's gdpr the binding corporate rules the uh, uh, applicant body in eu submit its internal rules and uh, of data protection to dpa for certification and implements the rules within the group once the dpa grants the certification data can then flow freely to every entity within the group. Another certification mechanism is the privacy shield agreement uh, between the EU and the US. 
Essentially, EU sets a rule for processing of European data by the U.S. company in the U.S., and the U.S. company applies certification of compliance with this rule to the Commerce Department of the U.S., these two mechanisms all govern only one direction of data flow, that is flow of data from the EU to other country. And we all know that uh, this is generally requires two ways of data transfer in order to complete an operation. So ideally, uh, it would be good that certification for, could fulfill the requirement of two or more countries at the same time. This requires international cooperation. And currently, uh, CBPR system stands for such an example. As you can see in this diagram, each participant, uh, participating economies grants certification to applicant country, uh, companies within its own jurisdiction. And the rule of certification for all economies is the same, which is APEC, uh, uh, APEC privacy framework. But unfortunately, the APEC privacy framework, which CBPR relies on, seems a bit outdated. Uh, and doesn't provide adequate, uh, robust protection for data. So finally, I would like to um, offer my suggestion for the One Bell and the One Row Initiative, especially for digital cooperation. First, we could start from the modern legal instrument for data protection, such as GDPR or uh, Convention 108, which offer better protection than the APEX uh, privacy framework to form the base, basis for rule of data protection. Second, amending such a rule according to the opinion of participating country to reach broadest consensus and adapt to each country's reality. Third, adapt from the enforcement mechanism of CBPR. In this way, I think we could have a modernized mechanism to sustain digital trace along the one bell and the one row initiative. And this concludes my presentation. And thank you again for this opportunity. Okay, thanks, uh, Professor Hong. It's a very clear, you know, explanation about the uh, adequacy and the inadequacy of the global data flow. Okay, uh, international framework. So next, we would like to uh, invite uh, uh, Mr. Just a moment. We would like to invite Mr. Wang Junfeng. Wang Junfeng is the uh, his topic is on the confrontation, the challenge, and the continuity of digital economy, and promoting an international consensus and digital governance. Well, Mr. Wang Junfeng is the global chairman of Kings Kings and Wood Manson's legal firm, and he is also president of the Bell and Road International Lawyer Association. Okay, please uh, welcome Mr. Wang Junfeng. Distinguished leaders and guests, good afternoon. I'm privileged to have the opportunity to attend 2022 Internet Governance Forum to exchange views with all participants on the global development of the digital economy. It constitutes the shared commitment and the responsibility of the internet, international community to develop, utilize, and manage the internet to maximize its places to benefit mankind and promote the coordinate development of the global digital economy. Currently, the globalization of the digital economy is in the ascendant and international digital cooperation is progressively intensified whilst we are simultaneously aware that global development of the digital economy is facing multiple challenges which demands our constant endeavor to Catalyze Global Digital Governance Forum. Firstly, trading in data as a new competitive resource has triggered a host of new problems. For instance, regarding individuals, unauthorized illegal data transactions may lead to the infringement of individuals' rights and interest in their personal information. 
and the protection of personal privacy will be severely challenged. Regarding enterprises, the leakage of trade secrets probably ignored in data transactions coupled with the digital monopoly have eroded fair competition and innovation vitality. Regarding the nation, its data security is directly related to national security data trading in the absence of effective management and under regulation may also jeopardize the national and social public interest. Secondly, the competition for data sovereignty among countries on the world arena has intensified and the conflict of jurisdiction and the law enforcement has become increasingly evident. Countries have successfully enacted data protection jurisdiction and have also established the rules for data cross-border jurisdiction beyond the traditional space. However, based on data security value, the data localization strategy has inevitably become one of the new legislative tools and the regulatory approaches. The cross-border transfer or localization requirements created by the countries around the world around the data sovereignty competition, along with the long arm enforcement rules, often inevitably lead to difficulties and must be confronted and resolved in the international digital cooperation and the development. Finally, due to varied starting point positions and peers, countries around the globe may differ significantly in the degree of protection and the regulatory stance on personal information and the data. At the current data governance stage, it's an urgent issue to be tackled to equally and amicably trade differences caused by the varied economic development phases and cultural values in countries and regions. It's also an imperative to agree, to disagree and coordinate different data regulatory requirements. It's our consistent belief that the establishment of international rules for digital governance based on consultation and consensus will contribute to conquering the obstacles to data flow triggered by the digital economy. On the one hand, we should sufficiently pursue common benefits of international cooperation in the digital economy and promote dialogue to achieve consensus and secure flow of data around the globe. On the other hand, we can maximize the cooperation strength of existing international multilateral rules and contribute wisdom and solutions to the rules for digital governance. Aiming at a better cyberspace that we sell create and leave to our children. Today, we gather here to hear, to exchange, to accommodate, and to work together, work with each other, and we shall succeed. Thank you. Okay, thanks for Thank Mr. You. Yeah, so Mr. Wang Yifeng. So now we pass the time to uh, General Secretary Yu Xiao for his uh, conclusion remark. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Chen. Uh, thank you, Yifeng. Uh, due to the limited time, that's all for the session of a keynote speech. 
Thank you all for your participation. Uh, our Cybersecurity Association of China is a pillar technical community dedicated to protecting cybersecurity and boosting cyberspace development. Uh, as the Secretary General of CSCC and the host of this forum, I would like to deliver a concluding speech for this uh, forum. The digital infrastructure is one of the key aspects to promote the steady development of a digital economy. It can effectively transform and empower traditional infrastructure, providing key support and the innovation momentum for the digital transformation of economy and society. China has actively participated in the international governance of digital economy by initiating and joining the G20 Digital Economic, Economic Development and the Cooperation in the Initiative. The Global Development Initiative, GDI, and other international cooperation agreements. We have also deeply participated in the formulations of international rules for digital economy and the carrier of, of the intensive ex exchanges and the cooperation with some countries in techni uh, technology standards and applications assets. To this end, we hereby call on all stakeholders to show their responsibility, further enhance exchanges and cooperation, and uh, step up efforts on co building and sharing digital economy. We encourage all stakeholders to formulate relevant policies and systems under the framework of the United Nations, taking concrete actions to break down digital trade barriers bridge the digital divide and enable all mankind to enjoy the dividends of the internet and the digital economy. It's hoped that the platform built by the UN IGF will play a more important role in this process. Guide more stakeholders to participate in make data exchange and cooperation the, uh, the cornerstones of um, digital economy development make technological innovation and cooperation the driving force of digital economy development and make industrial development and cooperation the source of digital economy development. At the same time, we call on uh, cons concerted efforts to strengthen cooperation on digital economy governance, promote the construction of a new global governance order and jointly explore the establishment of the uh, coordinated and uh, collaborative international cooperation and the exchange mechanism for digital economy. In this way, we can guide development with norms and ensure the healthy and the uh, sustainable development of digital economy for all. That's all for my speech. And uh, I want to say thank you all again for your active participation. Thank you for my co-host, uh, colleague, uh, Professor Chen, and uh, thanks for all uh, our uh, guest speakers. Uh, also, I want to say thanks to our uh, captain, uh, Tracy. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope that uh, we can look forward to meeting you again next year. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you. General Secretary Li Yuxiao. Sorry, because we are run from, uh, out of time, they already asked us to leave. So uh, just a reminder, tomorrow morning, we also have a live 30. We also have another workshop, which is 90 minutes net workshop in terms of the digital assets and digital divide uh, for the elderly people in China. So you're welcome to join us 9.30 30 tomorrow. We will have more time to discuss. OK, thank you for coming. Thank you. We have to finish here. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.